Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we are going to give you a how to play video for a game called Ritual. Now Ritual is currently on Kickstarter, so this is gonna give you some idea as to whether or not this is a project you'd like to back. In Ritual, two to five players will compete in the game of magical dominance to have the most influence over the creation of a magical scroll. Throughout the game, players will place their influence cubes on runes they help to complete. The player with the most influence cubes on the scroll at the end of the game wins. To set up the game, first place the scroll in the middle of the game space. This area of the scroll is referred to as the play area and is where players will be placing their tiles and building their runes. This is the ley line. Throughout the game, all players will be placing tiles from the ley line. And here we have some rules reminders. Next, each player selects the influence cube color of their choice, and the rest are returned to the box. Finally, put all the tiles into the large bag provided with the game. And that's the setup. To start the game, each player draws one tile from the bag. The first player will be the player whose tile has the most of a single type of rune piece. For instance, this tile has three fire rune pieces and therefore beats this tile with one fire, earth, and air piece. In the event of a tie, the types of runes take precedence in the following order, air, earth, fire, void, and water. This is easy to remember because it's in alphabetical order. As an example, this rune with two earth pieces and a void takes precedence over two fire pieces and an air. Therefore, this player would be the first player. In the same way, this piece with two earth and a void will also be this piece with two earth and a water. Because while the two earths are tied, we move on to the void and it beats water. Once the first player has been determined, the players put their tiles on the ley line and the first player begins her turn. Every player turn in Ritual consists of three steps that must be completed in this order. Activate runes, refreshing the ley line, and placing tiles with an influence cube. Let's take a look at how activating runes works. A rune is formed when three tiles come together like this in a way that three tile corners of the same element form a complete rune. In this case, a water rune has been completed. Activating a rune is optional and a player may activate any number of runes so long as the following two conditions are met. The player must have three of her own influence cubes on a rune, one on each tile, and there must be at least one tile on the ley line. If those two conditions are not met, then the activate rune step is skipped and the player continues to the next step. Sometimes the activation of a rune will create a new rune. These new runes may also be activated as long as the previous mentioned conditions are met. If the player chooses to activate a rune, first she takes any tile from the ley line and places it back in the bag. Next, she removes her three influence cubes from the rune. Finally, she activates the effect of the rune based on the rune's element. Keep in mind that if the player is activating more than one rune, such as this void rune followed by this water rune, the player must fully resolve one rune's activation before beginning the activation of another rune. We'll discuss the effects of each element in a few moments, but for now, let's move on to the next step of a player's turn. In the second step of the player's turn, she will pull tiles at random from the bag until five tiles are on the ley line. The player may place the tiles pulled from the bag on any available space on the ley line. Keep in mind that once a player begins refreshing the ley line, she may no longer choose to activate runes during her current turn. The third step in a player's turn is to place a tile on the scroll. 
The player may place any tile from the ley line next to any tile she has an influence cube on. So if the green player is placing this tile, she could place it here or here or even here. However, this would not be a legal placement. Normally, a player must place a tile next to a tile that already has one of their influence cubes on it. However, if the player finds she is unable to do that, such as in turn one, or if she has become cornered, the player may instead place a tile anywhere she wishes on the scroll. This tile can even be placed completely separate from any other tile on the scroll. Once the tile is placed, the player then places an influence cube of her color on that tile. If when the player places the tile, it completes a rune, as you see here, a water rune is completed, that player then places an influence cube on the tile she just placed, and any tile part of that rune that doesn't already have one of her influence cubes on it. So this tile, which already has a green cube, would not get an additional one. It's important to note a few key concepts in regards to placing tiles. Tiles may only be placed on empty spaces. They may not be placed on top of other tiles. Tiles are not required to match the other tiles around them. They may be placed with misaligned elements like this, mismatched elements like this, or both mismatched and misaligned elements. Also, as I've briefly mentioned already, each player may only have a single influence cube per tile. However, multiple players may have their influence cubes on the same tile. If a game effect tells a player to put an influence cube on a tile that already has an influence cube belonging to that player, then that portion of the effect is ignored. Also, tiles are always placed on the scroll face up with the rune pieces visible. On the back of this prototype is a blank space. However, in the final version of the game, there will be a scorch mark here. And the scorch mark is always placed face down when initially placing the rune. Once the player finishes placing her influence cubes on the appropriate tile or tiles, her turn is over and play passes to the next player on the left. When a tile is played in every space in the outer circle of spaces on the scroll, the active player places any appropriate influence cubes and then the ritual is complete and the game immediately ends. Players counter their influence cubes on the scroll and the player with the most influence has most effectively displayed their mystical prowess and won the game. So here we can see that both the green player and the pink player have 10 influence cubes on the board. So let me remove some of this stuff and we can take a look at what we need to see to break that tie. So now we can see that the green player has two completed runes and the pink player has two completed runes. In this case, where there is still a tie, the tied player with the most air runes wins, so you can see the pink player has won the game. However, if there were still a tie, then you would check to see which tied player had the most earth runes, and then fire runes, void runes, and then water runes. Now that we've covered how to play Ritual, let's look at the specific effects that occur when activating each type of rune. Remember that to activate a rune, you must remove three of your color influence cube from that rune and then also place a tile from the ley line back in the tile bag. However, for these demonstrations, I'm going to skip those two steps and just show you the effects of the runes themselves. When a player activates an air rune, she must choose any face-up tile on the scroll that does not have one of her influence cubes on it and place her influence cube on that tile. If the chosen tile is part of any completed runes, then place an influence cube on each of those runes. So you can see this void rune is part of that tile, as is this fire rune. And while this partially completed water rune is also part of the tile, the influence cubes will only go on completed runes. When a player activates an earth rune, she first adds a tile to the ley line from the bag. Keep in mind, this occurs after she has already removed the tile from the ley line in order to activate the rune in the first place. Next, the player takes any tile from the ley line and places it anywhere on the scroll, and then places one of her influence cubes on it. If the placement of that tile completes one or more runes, each tile of those completed runes gains an influence cube. 
When a player activates a fire rune, she chooses any face-up tile on the scroll. The player removes all influence cubes from that tile, returning them to their respective players, and then flips over that tile to the scorched side. This prevents the tile from being part of any runes. If the selected tile is part of a completed rune, all influence cubes are removed from that rune and returned to the respective players, and then the entire rune is flipped to the scorched side. It's important to know that only runes that are part of the initially targeted tile are affected by this. So, if this is the targeted tile, these three influence cubes would come off and these three tiles would be flipped. However, the remains of this rune would not be affected even though part of it is flipped over because this was the initially targeted tile. When a player activates a void rune, she chooses any scorched tile on the scroll and places one of her influence cubes on that tile. If the chosen tile is immediately adjacent to any other scorched tiles, the player then places an influence cube on those tiles as well. Keep in mind this effect does not spread beyond the tiles immediately adjacent to the original target of the effect, so this tile in this example would not get an influence cube. When a player activates a water rune, she chooses any tile from the scroll and swaps it with one from the ley line. Any influence cubes on the targeted tile are transferred to the new tile. The player then also adds one of her own influence cubes to that tile. If the new tile completes any runes, the player also adds influence cubes to the tiles of the completed runes. The player may choose a scorch tile to replace, and if she does, the scorch tile is turned face up on the ley line. Also, if the ley line happens to be empty, the player can instead swap the tile out for a randomly drawn tile from the tile bag. And that's how you play Ritual. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. If you think that Ritual is something you might be interested in backing, please look in the description below and click on the link to go over to their Kickstarter page and take a closer look. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.